Hello fellow Earthlings, it's Libs, and today I'm going to be doing my March reading wrap up. So I, in the middle of the night, decided to give myself a haircut. I'm not quite sure if this has gone according to plan or not. I figured I'm just going to ignore it and maybe it'll grow out and look okay in the future. We shall see. I read seven books in March, which I'm pretty happy with because some of them were quite short. I read quite a bit of non-fiction and in my head it seemed like quite a diverse reading month. I guess I'll see when I look at all the stats. Okay, so I read seven books in March and that was 1,581 pages. The majority of books I read re were reflective, emotional and adventurous. 50% of them were at medium paced. The vast majority were between 300 and 499 pages. I read two non-fictions. Uh, my, the most popular genres I read were children's, classics and historical. And the average rating I gave was 4.2 stars. I will point out I didn't actually rate every book I read this month, so I might start by talking about the books that I chose not to rate. The first book was one that I finished right at the start of the month, and that is Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. Um, I think I talked about, a lot about this one in my Reading Robert Pattinson's reading recommendations video. Uh, this is kind of just a mishmash of human history. It's very interesting. I just, I wouldn't recommend listening to the audiobook of this because it was really hard to take in all the information. And then it turns out there's lots of little diagrams and graphs and things to help illustrate points and you miss all of that. So I think that kind of tainted my reading experience. I know he's got some other books that I'm planning to read in the future, so if I can get physical copies or ebooks of those, then I'll read them. But if it's just an audiobook, I'm not gonna not gonna bother because that yeah, it didn't didn't quite work out for me. And the other book I did not rate was the other nonfiction I read, and that is Why You Should Give an F About Farming by Gabrielle Chen. <laughs> I also listen to this one as an audio audiobook. The author uh, narrates it. It's kind of just about why farming is really important in Australia and looking at some of the weird policies surrounding different aspects of farming. I went on holiday this in um, March and this was a book I listened to on the plane and I get so terribly motion sick that I don't really remember <laughs> any main specific points in this book. I definitely care more about farming now, but there's not like one big takeaway that I can remember. So it's good, I think. If this sounds like something you might be interested in, definitely give it a go. It's just not quite, it didn't quite engage me as much as I wish it had. But that's probably more of a me thing than a the book thing. So the lowest ranking I gave a book this month was 3.5 stars. And I gave that to The Country of Others by Leila Slamani. This is another book where I read it and I just don't think I've retained very much about it. I was so excited to read this book. It was in my um, like five star prediction video. It's by the same author who wrote um, Lullaby, which is one of my favorite books of last year. Um, and again, this one was translated by Sam Taylor from the French. This is, book is about a woman after World War II who met this Moroccan soldier. And so she moves to Morocco to marry him and it's kind of her experiences living in this country that's so vastly different from her own. She is French, but it also goes into the point of view of the husband and the husband's mother and her children. <laughs> and then the nun 
at the school where the child goes to and then it also kind of jumps to like a doctor and then it jumps to the doctor's wife and it jumps around so much that it kind of left nothing to the imagination you're kind of being told everything about everyone and why every character is acting the way they're acting you're not discovering things it's just it's all there and because you're jumping around so much i don't feel like i ever got to know any of the characters particularly well or really care about them very much i don't know it just it was a lot and there were some interesting things in this book and I'm not, i don't think it was you know poorly written or boring it's just it was do, trying to do too much i think and because of that i just i couldn't quite enjoy it as much as i really wanted to so it was a three and a half star for me I have two books that I rated a four star. The first is The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. I love this book. I just think that it's perhaps not the most exciting of Beatrix Potter's books. It's it's cute and it's a staple, it's a classic, but I don't know. I'm a big fan of Jemima Puddle Duck and all the stories about involving kittens, which I can't remember the names of. Those are my favourites. So it's cute, it's sweet, it's a great children's story. Uh, there's some others I like a bit more. The other book I have is After Story by Larissa Brent. I don't think I'm saying that right. This is another Australian novel. It's It's about so many things I don't know how to really explain it so you've got this young woman who is kind of like a lawyer or something involving law and she is going to travel with her mother to England to do a literary tour of England it explores their um, First Nations heritage um, the fact that there was a very tragic event that happened in the family when the daughter was very very young it also looks at generational trauma um history the way different histories are sometimes some histories are built up to be really important and other histories are kind of diminished <sighs> the way alcohol can affect a family um you've got so many there's so many things in this book um you've also got this really like this old white professor who kind of thinks like he's really insecure because the world's changing and people want to hear opinions other than his own so he's determined to make his opinions be the loudest and he keeps going on about how he doesn't like Virginia Woolf and how he thinks Jane Austen is overrated and it's just he's very frustrating but it, the book tries to be somewhat sympathetic to him at the end there's just there's so many things going on in this book and I really really enjoyed the conversations it started um you kind of have each day of the tour will be told from both the daughter and the mother's point of view and that can be really good in some parts but then there's other parts where it's kind of just rehashing things a bit but I think it worked well in some some points I don't know I just think again this book was trying to do everything and I think if it was just one or two points could have just been toned down a little bit and it would have possibly worked a bit better I don't know I did really enjoy it and it did a lot of great things I liked how it all was wrapped up at the end it was a really strong ending for me I just think that it was doing <laughs> so many things all at once and it's a really great book that I would recommend it yeah you've kind of got this murder mystery aspect that's not really a mystery because you know who is guilty but 
the characters don't tell you who was guilty <laughs> until further on in the book and you don't really know what happened and it's slowly revealed to you. There's just there's a lot of trauma <laughs> in this book um, but it's great. So it's a really solid, it's a solid book. Then I have one four and a half star and that is Love in the Time of Cholera by Gabriel Garcia Marquez translated by Edith Grossman. This is a Colombian classic that I don't know how to explain very well. You've got this little old woman and her husband the doctor dies and then this man that she was in love with as a young adult shows up on her doorstep and tells her that he's still in love with her and it kind of explores like their relationship and how their lives diverged and how they're kind of in some ways brought back together exploring Colombian history this book is very funny actually I didn't expect it to be so funny the only reason it's not a five star is there's a few more problematic elements um the there is some racism in this book to be aware of that was unpleasant and then there is the grooming of a teenager which is extremely unpleasant and isn't really commented on it's just kind of there and then it's kind of brushed to the side um that was very unpleasant to read about so if that wasn't there this would have been a five star book because it's beautifully written it's very funny it's it's wonderful in so many ways it's just i can't in good conscience give it a five star because of that it's just it's too the it's, it's a very uh and then I had one five star read and that was Avatar The Last Airbender The Search which is a graphic novel exploring Zuko and Azula and the gang teaming up together to try and find out what happened to Zuko and Azula's mother. This book is very much more about the search rather than the destination but I think if you're a big fan of Zuko and Azula and you want to see some character development and growth and sibling bonding in a weird way then you will absolutely love this one it's my favorite so far out of all the comic and um, graphic novels I've read from the series so far I just had a really great time with it and would highly recommend okay that is it for this video I'm going to try and actually get on top of things again so that I'm posting regularly because it's been a hectic month and my schedule's all out of whack but hopefully things will be a bit more on it in the near future and I shall see you next time. Bye!